Howdy, and welcome to the Texas Bucket List, the show dedicated to everything under the sun to soak up right here in the Lone Star State. When it comes to finding sweet stops in Texas, there is a particular place in Lufkin that's been making candy here since the 1930s. So we let our sweet tooth do the steering on over to the woods of East Texas for a lesson on this legendary Texas treat. <laughs> You don't have to travel the Milky Way to find pieces of candy that have a connection to our great state. And you don't have to spend a hundred grand getting there either, because in Lufkin, you'll find the Atkinson Candy Company, and they've got a big hunk of good candy. Plenty of it. Do you uh, eat a piece of candy every day or? More than one. More than one? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, surprise, surprise. Eric Atkinson runs the candy factory his grandfather, B.E. Atkinson, started during the Great Depression. See, you weren't the kid in the candy store. You were the kid in the candy factory. <laughs> I was playing in the peanuts when I was a little boy. Man. That was fun. <laughs> a relative uh, told him that uh, he ought to get into candy distribution because um, uh, nobody had any money, but everybody had a nickel. In 1938, Atkinson started production on their own candy. And according to Eric, East Texas had about 450 candy companies at the time. Today, Atkinson Candy is the largest family-based candy company in Texas. Even though we manufacture candy, what we make is happiness. Known for their Chico sticks, peanut butter bars, black cows, and long boys, Atkinson makes an assortment of candies that could please the palate of just about any Texan. It's kind of cool, you're Lufkin's Willy Wonka. Yeah, kind of, <laughs> kind of am. We got transported into a world of pure imagination to see how this candy is really made. The first thing you notice, the temperature. Of course, in a, in a candy factory, you want your kitchen to be warm, you know, so it's not necessarily uh, at a temperature that everyone would prefer, but the candy loves it. <laughs> keeps it malleable, I'm sure, right? It does, it does. It keeps it uh, from getting too hard while we're processing the candy. As long as it's in this room, the temperature of the product stays above about 260 degrees. And, and uh, that makes it uh, soft and malleable, although damn hot. So, <laughs> How long has it been going on like this? Uh, we've made candy like this since day one, 85 years. Wow. From bubbling hot caramel to peanut butter bars being stretched in four, these big blobs of sugar don't look much like candy until they get to the end of the line. Amazing to see such a big piece of candy continue its, uh, its way down the line. Yeah, because you look at the batch, you think, how on earth are you gonna get that batch into that little bitty piece? Yeah. This is how, right here. They take in that rope of candy, they give it its final diameter, they cut the candy off in its final shape or length, they feed in film, wrap the film around the candy, slot, cut the film, twist it, not once, but twice, and spit it out at around 750 pieces a minute on wow, this machine. that's unreal. Pretty amazing. Just, you can, it's amazing to watch it just spit those things out, 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 out. That's unreal. That is a lot of caramel. All day, all night, every day. The entire process is like an orchestra. Dedicated to the sweet sounds of Sweets. While watching this symphony that serenades the taste buds, the one question that churned in my mind. How'd the name of the Chico State come to be? The single most asked question I get. Really? Yeah. And uh, I wasn't alive when, it, when that came around, so uh, I don't have first-hand knowledge. But here's what I do know. Candy like this back in the day was originally called chicken bones. In about 1950, when we started selling outside the state of Texas, is when we learned what a trademark was. <laughs> <laughs> and somebody, somebody had the trademark for chicken bones. So we had to come up with another name for our candy. And somewhere in that process, we came up with a Chico stick. And my best guess of why they were ever called that was because they kind of looked a little bit like a uh, piece of fried chicken. Chico sticks is what we named them, and it stuck. Oh, it and, it, and, it, and it's fitting because we're making them out here in the sticks. <laughs> <laughs> 
Enjoying this Texas treat is easy and inexpensive. You can find it just about anywhere in the country, but you can also come to the factory and visit the Candy Kitchen, a chance to get treats that didn't quite make the cut at wholesale prices. In other words, cheap. That whole bag of peanut brittle, 75 cents. 75 cents. <laughs> the parts that get cut off from brittle, that's the best. Yeah, that's, that's a good that's stuff. A, that's, you're talking about what I like the best? <laughs> the, it's the little ends off the, the brittle line? Sure. Oh my God. Like the end of a charred brisket, right? That's uh, a good yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, I kind of <laughs> like that, kind of like that. Every piece of candy that comes out of here has something to be proud of. For a little town like Lufkin, Texas, our candy is the best ambassador it's got sure. because you can go anywhere in the country and find a Chico stick and you roll that stick over and it'll say right there, made in Lufkin, Texas. What's it mean to you to be a part of this family tradition that's lasted so long here in East Texas? Oh, it becomes a part of you. It definitely does. And, uh, and it's, a, you know, it's a sense of pride that we've been able to succeed and um, take something that my grandfather brought up from the ground and, and um, make it um, uh, a player in, uh, in the world of confection in this country. So yeah, it's a, it's a big source of pride.